Hello, and thanks for joining me for another video from the Bismarck Weather Education Center. Today, we will be learning about measuring ozone. But first, why do we care about this trace gas in our atmosphere? Well, as you may know, the sun emits radiation at many different wavelengths. Some of those wavelengths are harmful UV rays. If these UV rays made it down to the surface, life as we know it would not exist. However, with an ozone layer high in the atmosphere, most of these harmful UV rays are absorbed. This absorption also causes the ozone layer to heat up and plays a key role in the temperature structure of our atmosphere. That's right, hooray ozone. Now that we know wh why ozone is important, why do we need to measure it? Most all research on ozone is done by NOAA and NASA. Research ranges from how the ozone layer interacts with the rest of the atmosphere to most importantly how ozone concentrations are changing. So how do we measure ozone? Satellites. With all the satellites in orbit, NASA can map the entire ozone layer around the Earth. However, satellite ozone measurements do fall short when keeping ozone records. Satellites have relatively short life cycles and each satellite has its own measuring bias, which means each satellite gives different answers. Second, satellite measurements only go back so far. But where satellites fail, surface observations succeed. The purple stars represent 15 locations around the world that give regular ozone measurements. Some locations date back to as long ago as the 1920s. The site in Bismarck dates back to 1962. The machines taking measurements at these locations rarely if ever get changed out, so there is little to no bias in the data. This is the machine we measure ozone with. The Dobson Ozone Spectrophotometer, or Dobson for short. The Dobson was invented back in 1924 by Gordon Dobson, and besides a few electronic upgrades, the machine has changed very little since. Here at the Bismarck office, the Dobson gets its own building, which is located behind the main office. The building is climate controlled and has a rotating and retractable roof, so direct solar radiation or sunlight at different times of the day can reach the Dobson. So how does the Dobson work? Let's walk through a measurement. Solar radiation enters a tube that reflects down into the machine. From there, sunlight bounces off another mirror and goes back through a lens and prism. Light reflects off a mirror and goes back through the prism. From there, the light is separated into a spectrum at known wavelengths. This spectrum enters a wedge with slits that allows only certain wavelengths that are affected by ozone molecules through. A chopper wheel inside the Dobson acts to segment the wavelengths so they can be measured individually. After going through another series of lenses, prisms, and mirrors, the segmented wavelengths are sent into a photomultiplier tube, which measures the difference between the wavelengths. This difference allows us to know the thickness of ozone in a column of atmosphere, the units are measured in Dobson units, and a typical measurement when brought to standard temperature and pressure only comes to about an eighth of an inch. This means if you took all the ozone from the surface to the edge of the atmosphere and brought it down to the surface, the amount of ozone would only be as thick as two pennies. That is all the ozone it takes to protect life on Earth. For more on ozone research and measurements, you can visit NOAA's Earth Systems Research Laboratory website, and for more educational videos, visit our homepage and follow us on YouTube and through social media. Thanks for listening.